Welcome to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. Shep will talk with some of the smartest thinkers in business to help make you more successful in your professional and personal life. This is Amazing Business Radio with Shep Hyken. Hello, everybody. It's Shep Hyken here. We are back with another episode of Amazing Business Radio. And today we have Alan Masaryk, the CEO of Avaya. Now, this is going to be a little bit different episode. Uh, this is a huge, huge, huge company. And we are talking to a new CEO that has taken the company uh, through bankruptcy and emerging very strong and very powerful. I want to talk to him about how he did it. I want to talk to him how it impacted the customers, how it impacted employees, and much more. Before we get into that, a couple of quick announcements. If you have a question or you have a story that you want to share, please reach out to me on any of the social channels. I am pretty much everywhere. And if it is a question, be sure to use the hashtag Ask Shep, and I'll be sure to answer the question either right there in the social channel and my newsletter, The Shepherd Letter, uh, or perhaps on this show or even my TV show, which is Be Amazing or Go Home. And you can find episodes on Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Roku, or just go straight to the website, beamazing.tv. That's beamazing.tv. All right, let's get into our interview. Alan, welcome to the show. Shep, thanks so much. Great to be here. Well, I'm excited because uh, we are talking to, I, I know your title is CEO. I call it GIC, guy in charge. <laughs> I, I, and actually, I could say girl in charge, guy in charge, or I could be politically correct and just say uh, person in charge, PIC. There we go. How's that? There we go. All right. But let's go, with, uh, let's go with the CEO role. You have come to Avaya in a very tumultuous time. By the way, for those that don't know, uh, Avaya is a, really a communications company. Um, uh, as I like to summarize the quickest way I can do it is saying you make it easy for customers to communicate with companies. Is that a good way of saying it? That's exactly right. I like to think of us as the, we are the underlying technology to enable that corporate customer to communicate with its customers in a, in a manner in which it delivers that great experience. Right. And that means if I want to reach you by phone, email, a social channel, you make it really easy for me for to interact in any of those channels. That's correct. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Anything else you want to add to it? That's, this is your big chance to pitch Avaya to everybody at the top well, of the I think, show. Look, well, so look, what I think, what is exciting about what's happening in the um, sort of the mega trend is towards CX. So brands have to differentiate themselves based on customer experience. Mm -hmm. Being somebody who is a leader in the communications world across unified communications and contact centers, so think back of, all, back of house, knowledge worker, or front of house agent, <clears throat> that customer experience requires those employees and front of house agents being on a common system. That's what we provide. And so as brands need that enabling technology so that it's a great experience for their employees and it enables their employees to interact with customers on an omni-channel basis. It doesn't, obviously the days of just doing this in voice are behind us. Now it's augmented with chat and social and digital. That integrated omni experience is what's so important. That's yep. what we provide. Perfect. All right. So let's get into your story because you've only been CEO of the company for about 10 months or so. Correct. And Correct. you came at a tough time. You're going to turn it all around. Well, look, it, it, it has been a, it's been a crazy year and uh, it's been a fun year, but it's been a crazy year. Um, you know, look, I've been in the communications and software business for a very long time. Most recently at Vonage, um, we move Vonage into the enterprise communication categories that uh, Avaya is the leader in today around UC and CC. So I was very familiar with the company and very familiar with the industry, and we led a transformation. So I'm comfortable in transformational environments. I, I happen to sort of, you know, kind of go to them. Um, so transformational environments, and I'm very comfortable in the communications industry itself. Yeah. So I was always um, interest in, in Avaya from within the industry, but outside the company. 
to me, the opportunity was pretty profound. You have an enormous asset base. Think of a buy as an asset base. You have this enormous set of customers. Many of our customers are the largest communication deployments in the world. Global distribution, almost 90,000 customers. Huge IP portfolio, much of it seminal to the industry. A brand that can only be described as iconic. And you take that asset base, again, where we're the largest installed base in the world in both the UC and the CC categories, and look at the mega trend. It's moving towards customer experience. So I looked at it from my perspective. The thesis was, how do you take these assets and that mega, mega trend and play it successfully? Now, we knew that we had to do a big financial restructuring. We were over levered and we had a bloated cost structure. So <clears throat> over the course of the last 10 months, actually we finished it a couple months ago now, we went through and have right sized the cost structure and we used the chapter 11 process to completely change the balance sheet structure such that really through a combination of debt forgiveness and new capital invested in the company, uh, it was about $4 billion. $4 billion was the sum of debt relief and new capital in the business. So now you have a company that is profitable out of the gate because of all the operational changes with a balance sheet, which I don't, quite frankly, I'm not sure anybody, I'm not sure who I changed places with. I mean, we are very strong. So we went from financial frailty to legitimate financial strength, executing on that core business transformation of how do you take these assets and play them into that mega mega trend. That was the thesis, and we're executing on that like mad. So it's been a very busy 10 months, but it's been super enjoyable too. All right, so I have to ask, going all the way back to the beginning of your career, I mean, do you, uh, I mean, you're in a technology type of company, so do you have a technology? I know you've worked with Vonage, Google. Uh, yeah. Do you consider yourself a technology person, or are you a business person just that just understands the industry? I'm a business person. I'm not a strict technologist. Uh, matter of fact, my undergraduate degree was in accounting. At, I have at Harvard. MBA. At Harvard. Well, I have at Harvard, yes. But I got to say that because that's like really <laughs> impressive. Yeah. Where, where'd you go? I went to Harvard. Yes. Uh, Anytime I say it, I feel smarter. <laughs> well, okay, great. Thank <laughs> you. But I think the point is, is I've been running software companies in either application software uh or and or in the communications industry for about 30 years now. So while I don't have a specific, you know, undergraduate degree in CS or something, um, I've been in this world for a very long period of time. Wow. And and obviously you're doing well. I mean, we take a look at where Avai is today and I've got a list. I mean, you have customers in 172 countries. Uh, you're, you've got 6 million installs and contact center seats. That's a lot of people using, uh, I mean, go on and on with where, where you are today, because you've really emerged out of this, uh, you know, you went through the chapter 11 process and here you are the strength, you've got the balance sheet, uh, working and uh, you've also, how, I've got to ask, I mean, go through some of these numbers as to where you are today, but I want to know how did your customers react during the tumultuous time? Were they nervous? How did you keep their confidence? Look, I think that. Um, one of the biggest challenges is um, when you go through some sort of financial distress, well prior to the actual Chapter 11 process, Chapter 11 process was very short. Um, but as you might imagine, all that financial noise gets weaponized against you by competitors, the industry in general. And we are a provider of such mission critical solutions to some of the largest institutions and government governmental agencies or governments in the world. So of course they get concerned. What we I think done have done a very effective job is to get out there as quickly and as often as possible with not just our employees, but our customers, prospects, all our channel relationships. Remember, about 70% of our sales globally go through some sort of indirect distribution, meaning throughout the world. And I've traveled a great deal. <clears throat> talking this story, talking this view that the megatrend and the asset base um, 
is sort of a match made in heaven. And that while, yes, we have plenty of executional work to do, we, I think, have developed a value prop that convinces them to stay, I'm going to st stay with Avaya, stay intra-Avaya on their journey, typically to the cloud. Um, we have developed for our base a strategy we refer to as innovation without disruption, which means fundamentally these very, very large deployments. And again, we're not only are we the largest in, in, in the world in the category, <clears throat> you know, particularly on the on the agent side. I mean, one out of one out of three, one out of every three contact center agents on the planet is using Avaya systems. Wow! Wow! So you take that footprint and these enormous enormous uh, um, installs. The risk of ripping it out is not just change management. It's fundamental business risk. You know, if you're a SMB and you've got 50 customers and a handful of agents, change can be aggravating, but it's not that big a deal. Right. If you have 5,000 concurrent agents yep. and the call flows have been bespoke into everything in the environment, ripping it out can create fundamental business risk. At the same time, and that's the disruption customers want to avoid, at the same time, Customers want to go beyond the traditional voice contact center and add in chat, social, and digital. And so the strategy innovation without disruption is exactly that. We bring you the innovation that's coming through uh, our a tenant of our multi-tenanted multi cloud solution, pair it through a unified client <clears throat> into the premise-based uh, voice solutions. The idea is we're saying to customers, we're not forcing you to move to the multi-tenant cloud. We're here to help you as and enable the journey that you've chosen. The whole point is about choice. So that customer may say, I want to stay on-prem or I want to move all the way to multi-tenant cloud. Those are the bookends. But many of these large customers, it's a gradual in-between state. Think of it as the hybrid where yeah, I want to add chat or I want to add this social channel or what have you. But my goodness, I don't want to rip out those super bespoke, mature, very heavily featured prem solutions. <clears throat> I want to sort of go much more slowly, if at yeah. all. By the way, that's that's a big company for you. And and I'll add that you have 90, you do business with 90% of the Fortune 100 in the United that's States. Correct. That's, that's correct. That's that's big. That tells you how big your company is, the type of clients you have. Uh, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to talk to you uh, because you've been quoting a lot about what you referred to as Avaya's North Star. I want to also talk a little bit about people and culture because anytime you go through the times that you've been going through, you've got to manage your workforce. You've got to keep people involved, engaged, and give them confidence that they shouldn't be looking elsewhere. And uh, I want to talk about how you kept Absolutely. your best people. And and I'm sure that anybody listening will learn, gosh, I can do that in my company as well. So we're going to take a short break. We're talking with Alan Masaryk, and we will be right back. Don't go away. One of my favorite sayings is that customer service isn't a department. It's a philosophy. And it's a philosophy that must be embraced by everyone in the organization all the time, and that's 24-7. So if customer service is important to you, and I know it is, then you will love our virtual training, the ultimate on-demand customer service and experience training program that you can access anytime, anywhere. Now, the course content applies to everyone, regardless of position and responsibility, from senior executives to the most recently hired and everyone in between. You'll discover tips, ideas, and strategies that won't cost your company a fortune, but will produce what I call moments of magic, those positive experiences, and it will happen at every level of your organization. So go to Customer Service VT. That's V as in virtual, T as in training. That's CustomerServiceVT.com. It's time to get customer focused. You're listening to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. Back on Amazing Business Radio, and we're talking with Alan Masaryk, the CEO of Avaya. And uh, we've been talking a lot about the journey that you've had in the last uh, the last 
10 months or so. Uh, so let's jump into some uh, additional topics. You've been quoted a lot about this thing you call Avaya's North Star. I have a feeling I know what the North Star is, but uh, just based on how focused you are on taking care of your customers and helping your customers take care of their customers. But let's hear it from you. That's exactly right. So the North Star, there's a product North Star and there's a people North Star. So the product North Star is around our contact center solution, our CCAS solution. We have rebranded the Avaya Experience Platform goes back to this fundamental belief that it's not about communications per se, it's about the, ultimately the customer experience. So it's how communications factors into delivering that. So the North Star product is the Avaya Experience Platform. As important as setting the North Star, we've also made decisions to rationalize old products that we will no longer support through a series of end of life, end of sale decisions. So that's enabled the engineering group to focus on the North Star. And as a result, we're burning down roadmap very, very quickly. So it's exciting to see how fast the roadmap's coming together. The same token is we're being super transparent about it. We started publishing roadmaps in November because in my view is I need to be able to demonstrate and show everybody the roadmap and then actually show the burn down by being transparent about it and demonstrating reliability. That's how you sort of restore yourself, in my view, to your customers is being, one, providing the innovation they need and along the way being transparent and reliable. If I tell you I'm going to do 10 features in the quarter, my goodness, you can take it to the bank. That's the first part of the North Star. The second part of the North Star is people. Culture is everything. So we have a ambition, a program we have here called Destination Place to Work, DPTW. Mm. How do you make Avaya a destination place to work, which is defined as create a culture that attracts the most talented in the industry? I've done this in the past, and it, you know, years ago I came from Google, and so truth be told, I took much of this initiative from what I learned at Google, <clears throat> but it really, really works. Um, we break it down in terms of driving this destination place to work culture around rewards and recognition, culture itself, and growth and development, how we're investing in people. And while we've had to make a bunch of changes, many of which are painful in these first few months, this organization is much more clear-eyed about the direction we're going because of the product North Star and also has that extra spring in its step. I think the culture is turning quickly. And I challenge customers and partners all the time when I meet with them. I go, the folks that you've been interacting with, does it feel different to you? And consistently they say yes. Mm, love it. And I think that the culture is so powerful. And um, just as you've been transparent with your customers, that transparency with your own people is important because how many people did fear for their jobs? How many people left before they actually got to see this transition take place? Well, look, some of the painful things that happen when you have to right size a cost structure is that you have to exit colleagues that you sort of hate to have to do that to. But we got ourselves into a situation where you had to right size the cost structure, had to you know, redo the balance sheet. And we've gotten both of those done. And so the organization now, if you will, heals and moves forward. Now, anybody that we had to exit, we hopefully have treated with the utmost of respect, severance and everything else. Uh, it's just the circumstances we found ourselves in. And even in the midst of those painful changes, my point again is this culture is turning dramatically. And, you know, culture is very personal. Um, and personal things, you know, what I mean personal is like, Culture could mean, you know, I want a cool office to one person or I want, you know, support of sustainability causes or, you know, DEIB or I want extra compensation. You know, it's personal. But nonetheless, it reflects itself in really quantitative measures. And so you begin to see higher engagement stores, mm. scores, lower termination, um, particularly lower regrettable termination, you know, voluntary termination. You see better glass door rankings. And my favorite one that you begin to see is internal referral. Meaning, Chef, you go to your best friend and say, hey, you should apply here. This is a cool place to work. Yeah. You know, that 
internal referral is like the best sort of, you know, reference that you're doing the right things. The same way a you, the NPS score on a uh, scale of zero yeah. to 10, what's the likelihood you'd recommend us to a colleague? That's about recommending the company uh, to a, as, a, as a new customer. But this is recommending your friend to become an employee. You know, yeah. true destination employment. I wrote about this in one of my books, The Amazement Revolution, and I interviewed several people. I actually didn't interview this gentleman, but he became my case study. Uh, is he just uh, his last name? Brian Keeley. That's it, Brian Keeley, uh, with Baptist Health South, created what he said was destination employment. That once somebody ends up there, they never want to leave. And taking it to the next level, what you're doing is: Are we good enough? that we would get them not to just not want to leave, but to say to the friends, Hey, you've got to come over here. You've got to, you know, check what's exactly. going on and, and and consider them, which is great. And in a time when it's really hard to get and keep good people, I don't know about you, you, you and I, you're probably much younger than me, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all the experience you have. Uh, I know that when I was a kid, most people, when they work for a company, they work there for the rest of their lives. It sure, was very, sure. uh, once in a while, you'd say, I'm going to go get a new job somewhere after many, many years. Today, yeah. coming out of college, the smart kids, and they're oh, yeah. saying, you know what? I can't wait for my first job because that's going to be the job that leads me to my next job. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. changes around a ton. I, look, I creating an environment where people you know, go back to the three components of destination place to work, rewards and recognition. I'm getting those here. Culture, it's a positive, reassuring culture of mutual respect and growth and development. I'm learning, they're investing in me. And these, again, there's all sorts of sub initiatives underneath that, um, which we're executing on. It's a journey without destination because you're always working on culture. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so important that we run this whole company based on just four objectives. There's just four. Number one is culture. Number one is this ambition around becoming a destination place to work. The reason it's number one is very purposeful. Culture wins all. Number two is the product I referenced before. We had to reset around the product North Star where we're going. So it's delivering that roadmap on time and of high quality. That's Objective number two. And number three goes back to customer delight. As I said earlier, the mega trend is a communications company like ourselves being the underlying technology to deliver customer experience. How crazy would it be if we're out there selling software to deliver a great customer experience for the, you know, for the business to its customers? if we weren't in turn an incredible customer service company. Right, right. You've got to be congruent. That's exactly right. And so we're investing very significantly in voice of the customer, in the international via users group, in our partner communities, um, our big engage conference, which I hope you get a chance to come to in Orlando next month, June 18th. The via engage opportunity is you're bringing, you know, couple thousand customers and partners in with all sorts of learning tracks again about giving them the opportunity to inform our roadmap. <clears throat> um, and we're moving, today we kind of track CSAP, but moving more broadly to NPS and we'll actually make that part of the incentive system where people get bonus on how we improve NPS. The mission ultimately is this. I would love to be able to demonstrate to a company business X, you know, a customer, you use my systems versus the competitor systems, you're going to deliver a better NPS to your downfield downstream customer. Mm, good goal. If I can prove that empirically, that's, you got to set your, you know, your mission to something. That's what I want us to be able to prove. And again, that is another journey without destination. You're always working on it. But those three objectives Culture, product, customer are key. Now, it feeds into the fourth, which is about being accountable to one another, to the customers, and to results. My own experience is if you do the first three well, the fourth one pretty much takes care of itself. 
Mm-hmm. Amen to that. Yeah. And and I think that, that those are the three areas. You've got your own people, you've got your customer, and you've got your shareholders. That's the results that you have to answer to those. And and you've done a magnificent job of, of you know guiding this company into new territory. I also believe you're getting high NPS scores, high customer satisfaction scores. You're also, you mentioned getting uh, an, a renewed increase in your glassdoor.com score, which is what employees are saying about you in a public forum, okay? And there is no doubt that you'll see the correlation between a high uh, customer satisfaction level and a high employee satisfaction level. They go hand in hand. I mean, look at the best companies in the world and and you can see both of them have, have high scores. We are just about out of time. I want to ask one final question. It's the question I ask of everybody. And that is the one thing question. Is there one last nugget of wisdom that you would like to share with us today? Love questions like that. I think that what I get very excited about is think of a think of a buyer and its lineage going all the way back to AT and T and Lucent. I mean, well, this is like you know this iconic, uh, incredible brand, and you know the world's changed a great deal around us, and so that it's less a nugget and more sort of a this sort of optimistic tone that I like to set, which is. Um, you know, we're coming back strong. We're here to stay. Um, we've got an incredible customer base and, you know, we're starting to serve them ever better product and customer support wise. So it's an exciting time to be here. It's been tumultuous, make no mistake, as you characterized it before, but it's exciting and it's, you know, the th- you know, all indications are heading up and to the right the way you like to see them. So, um, you know, kind of stay tuned and there's more cool stuff coming. All right. And we look Appreciate forward to hearing more about that for sure. You know, this has been a unique interview. Typically, we talk to somebody and we really focus on just the customer experience or customer service. And you've taken us to a whole nother level, to giving us a little peek behind the curtain as to how uh, you're you're taking care of a tough time. Uh, you're making your customers happy. You're keeping your employees engaged. You're managing uh, the product the way it needs to be managed. And all of that leads to making your shareholders and your stakeholders very, very happy. Congratulations on a great job. And thank you for the opportunity of us having this interview and being on the show. Chef, I appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Thanks so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. All right, everybody, that wraps it up. Another episode. And next week, we'll be back with another interview. So please come back. And until that time, this is Chef Hyken reminding you to always be amazing.